So the idea that we're gonna be working on today is going to look something like this. I was looking up graphs because I wanted to do a video on creating graphs. And this one looked kind of cool, um, but yeah, that's what we're aiming for, so. Explore a wide selection of pre-made creative tools for DaVinci Resolve, like titles, transitions, slideshows and infographs, like bar charts and callouts, and much, much more. Link in the description for more information. With the new version of DaVinci Resolve, you don't actually need any of this stuff here. If you're just making the effect itself, you don't need to have anything in here. You can go right into Fusion and start creating, and it'll automatically create a timeline for you, create a Fusion comp for you, and everything will be good to go. Uh, but if you're putting it into a project, you would just right click, create a Fusion comp, then put it into your timeline depending on where you wanted it. But for this, I'm just going to make this effect, then render it out, and then use that rendered out video in an edit for a video. So that's the idea that I'm gonna go with. So I have on my other screen that uh, graph up here for reference. So right now we don't see like a media out because if you were to make a uh, Fusion Comp, you would see that. But once I drag something into here, because there's nothing on the timeline, it'll automatically add it here. If I go over to the edit page, we'll now see it all over here. So it's pretty cool. Um, now let's just create that yellow background. So I'm just going to view it here. So I drug down the background, dropped it here. If I zoom in, we can see it says background, dragging it up here. Uh, over here in the inspector, we will go to gradient. And for this one, I'm going to do radial and let's pick some colors. Let's go with like a yellow and let's do another yellow, but we'll just make it a little darker. Maybe not that dark, maybe just like that much. Okay. So if we click on it, now we have these little controls here. We can move this and maybe this isn't enough of a difference. So we'll just click it, come in here and change this a little bit. Okay, so now we can see it. All right, so just having it in the center, um, just for a point of focus, I feel like that would be fine. And then now we can start working on adding in the lines. So first I'm just going to grab another background, right? So if I drag it up here, it's just a black background. We're gonna turn it to white to get those little lines. Now there's a couple of different ways that you could actually go about creating these lines. <clears throat> we could grab like a rectangle mask. Make it go like this. Oops. Grab the widget, come down, bring it down. And we could do this, copy this, control C, control V just to paste it so we have another one here, bring this over this way, make it skinny, and then make it tall, right? Maybe it was a little too tall. But you could do something like this, right? To make your little lines. Um, that is one way of going about doing it, um, but there's tons of other ways to do this as well. So that's one way. I guess we could go over the others. You could use a <clears throat> mask paint. What a mask paint does is it allows you to use all the paint tools, but in a mask form, right? So um, we can create multiple splines if we want to. So we could go like create, right? We can create one, then click here again, click here, click there. Now we have our two lines. And we can come over in here in the modifiers because we made two of them. Um, there'll be as two modifiers here. And you can come into each line and let's reduce that softness down, right? So it's not so soft around the edges. You could do that. You could also change the brush type to make this uh, square if you wanted to. And the cool thing with this, because the way in which this is built, we also have a stroke control. Let's go back over. We have a stroke control and we can do a right on, right? So we could have that line be written on across, right? So we can make an animation. So I think that's what we'll actually go with here. And both of these aren't really lined up. So what I'm actually gonna do is click on this one to get that one active. And up here, there's a bunch of different tools. So let's click on this tool here because this is only to modify points. It's not to add any points. Um, if we zoom in a little bit, 
we're not on the correct tool here. What's going on? Okay. No, still not on the correct tool. There we are. So we can slide it over. So now we have a perfect line for our effect there. And let's come back over and we'll back, come back over here. We'll back up both of these lines, right? Stroke control, come down, back this line up. Now we can make a little animation. So let's keyframe both of these right ons and let's come up a couple of frames, depending on what your frames per second is, would be, you know, kind of depict what would be the best thing to go with here. So there we have our little lines, right? I think I'll, what I'll actually do is make them a little longer. So what I'm gonna do is pop this up, opening up this spline tool, which allows us to see uh, all of our keyframes. So if I click this, click this button to see all of our keyframes, we can see them here. Um, they're the same color, so they're overlapping each other. Um, but what I think I'm gonna do is uh, come out a little further with the keyframe. So I'm actually gonna come out a little further with both keyframes, so I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. It's holding down control there, come on. I'm gonna highlight both of these, and then holding shift, we can change the position. What is going on? We can change the position of these. without changing the value. So let's bring it out that far. I don't know what these keyframes are that are created here. I'm just going to highlight and delete them. All right, we're gonna highlight both of these, hit F um, to flatten, to add easing in, and then we can increase this. So as they get drawn in, they kind of slow down towards the end there. All right. So now that is our little line. Now we need to make the lines for the other animations. So like I was showing with these rectangles, there's multiple ways to make these, but what I think I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to use um, the same method, but we have to change it just slightly. Let's show you here quick. So um, what am I doing? Mask, and we're going to connect this in. And then we're gonna lay these on top of each other so we can see them together. So we can go like that. And then come over here, we're gonna get the square. And we can pick our first spot for our first little line here. What I think I'm actually gonna do is just come into the screen so I don't see it. Click on spline. Kind of making this up on the fly. Here, we're gonna go like that to create our little line. And then um, maybe make this a little bit bigger. And the reason why I'm just going to have it right in the middle is because then I'll use this rectangle. So I feel like that would be easier to then, you know, align these correctly. I feel like that would make it a little easier because then I can just copy and paste this once I make this the first time. So the other thing with this, as you can see here, we have two colors, right? So let's quickly do that. I'm just gonna come in the gradient and I'm gonna make two colors. Let's come over here, we'll grab another color and make it a bit darker. And then we're gonna bring this over. And as you can see, this is going from zero to one. So if I make this like 0.4999 and then click on this one and make this one 0.5, we're not right in the middle. <laughs> Hold on a second. If we click on both of these, uh, how would I be able to do this? And if we come in and go to here and let's go into, um, how do we be able to get this dead center? So we could, do an edit point, but I feel like we could also do a publish points. And then we could put this like 0.5. I don't know what this is at for the height. And I'll do the same here. I guess I could have, wait a second, that should have did both of them. I don't know. I thought that would have done both publish points. Okay. So I'll make this 0.5 as well. So now we're right dead center. I feel like that's straight. 
Okay. And now if we take a look at our little line, we're just going to bump it up a little bit, just holding um, shift so we don't go left and right. We only go up and down. Now we can bring this over this way, clicking on it again, shift, and then align these how I want. But now that I created it, I can just copy and paste and add another one in here. So we can see here, we can come into the background and change the colors of this. And I feel like I just found an issue because I can't grab the other one. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go back to this one, grab this hex code, and we'll put the hex code in here and then just drop down the brightness and make this 0.5. All right, and then we can boot, scoot this over, come into here, click, shift, and we can pick a point for that. And now with all of these masks, we can easily go in and do a write on to animate them, right? So we can add an animation in for each one of those. I feel like that is kind of the gist of this. Um, that is that is pretty much that, and we can grab the background. So we're kind of, we kind of, except for like the particular picks of colors, I feel like these picks of colors are a bit better, but picks of colors, we're kind of there. If we really wanted to, we could throw arrows on it. But I feel like the next portion of this whole thing would be this uh, drop shadow, right? So I don't really know the proper way that, I don't know how they did it. I have an idea of how to do it because I noticed that there is a drop shadow for everything. So it's not like they just grabbed one and they added a drop shadow for each one. All of these elements they added a drop shadow for. So I have an idea on how to do that. So the way in which we built this, we have everything singled out before it goes onto the background, right? Um, so what we can do is we can grab this information and create a drop shadow. Now, one way that I think we can do this is with a uh, directional blur. This is going to be a bit on the expensive side when it comes to like processing, but I feel like this might actually work. So, if we pick a way in which to get this to blur, so let's get a blur like that, right? And now we come out of that into a bitmap. And then we crush this. I think we just created it. And now if we do like a, uh, let's just do another background. All right, and we'll drag the background into here, and then we can change this opacity to like 20. And then we drop this in this whole little chain that we have going here. Let's make a little more room here. I feel like this is how we could create this. So we go like that, then we add this on. So now we have that with the drop shadow, and we go like that, boom. I think we created it. This goes off screen, so you could just come into the directional blur and increase the length to like two. I feel like that is kind of like this, right? Uh, maybe a little bit more on the angle. I feel like that is kind of like that, right? Okay, this is starting to look ugly. <laughs> Let's just go with one color. It's kind of getting there. Oh gosh, we don't want to do that. <laughs> All right, so the other thing you could do with this is to get in the background um, on this merge, we'll just hit Control T to flip the inputs. So we're like that. So now we're not putting the color over top. Hold on a second, let's grab this 
and then just make it darker. Something like that. Looks like they want more. Something of that nature. Now this is whole thing's looking more orange than the yellow I have going, but yeah, get the idea. Something like that. If you ever wanted these lines to be longer, obviously these are the two lines. Um, you just come into them and then just increase their size. Right. Other thing we could do too is you would have these actually go in if we want it. Or no, you don't want that, but then we just grab a rectangle and we use this to clean up everything. Because we can go invert. We're going to bring this down. Zoom in here. Bring it right to there. And we'll go full width. So now we don't have to be super concerned about lining that up. Because now it's lined up uh, accordingly. Right? So just to make these look the same. Let's just do 0 0.7. Or 0 0.07. 0 0.07. Now we have... Uh, I feel like that kind of worked out um maybe grab this one remember we just used the merges for the left and right position so we could bring this over like this because how everything is set up all of the shadows are automatically uh you know redone and i feel like that kind of like worked out so now if i wanted to add in those animation i didn't even think about the animation actually having uh be in there as well but now so we have, I would say, I like there always to be movement. So like right about here, maybe we can come into the first one and we can do it's right on effect. Uh, let's add, let's make this over 20. We can go like that. And then here we'll start this one as well. Back like that. We'll go plus 20. Have that come in, highlight both of those, come into the spline, and we'll also, uh, so what I like to do here is we're starting to get a bunch of stuff, is if you start to get a lot and it's hard to see, you wanna have this only show select it, cause then it'll only show the nodes that you currently have selected. Then we can highlight the tops, go like that. And now we have a bit of an animation going here. Now let's watch that back cache because now we have that all cached. And there we go. I feel like that kind of was everything here. They just, I like their colors a lot better. <laughs> if you wanted to add text on here, you could simply just add a text note. Now, the way that this is all set up, all of this stuff before, is all getting fed into here. So it's all going to have the uh, drop shadow. If I was to add on text in here somewhere, this is also going to have the drop shadow. So that's something to, to take note of. Um, that's actually a cool effect in itself. But um, yeah, that that's just something to note, right? So if you didn't want that, you would just have to put it after the drop shadow. So after all of this down here. So if we put it down here, obviously this is after um, creating the drop shadow. So now this uh, text wouldn't have the drop shadow. And then you could simply just, you know, put this, maybe not so big, but you could put this wherever, you know, and maybe have a bunch of lines that are indicating something and maybe something down here that indicates um, something as well for your little animation. Once you're done with creating it, let's just get rid of this. We can go over into the media out. Once on the media out, now if we go back over to the edit page, now we will have it here. So now we'd be able to just render this out as a video clip and put it in our project or use this for, if you already have it you know, in your timeline, you would then have this fusion clip where you can place it wherever you needed this animation. So that's pretty much it. I think it turned out all right. I just, I'm not a huge fan of the colors. 